step time, your scene start time, the scene hold time, and the loop status. Step zero is for a delay time. We would adjust wheel number three under the hold setting if we wish to add a delay. As I want my show to start instantaneously, I won't add a delay and advance to step one. It now tells us that the scene is currently empty and the default hold time is five seconds. To select our first scene, we'll press the scene button. Then use the up down page keys to select the page that contains the scenes that we wish to incorporate into our show. I'll then select one of the number buttons to select a scene. We can then adjust the hold time for our first scene by using data wheel three. I'll set it to hold for seven seconds. To start this step, press enter. Our show step will advance by one. We'll select our next scene for a second show step. I'll set this to hold for five seconds. Then press enter. I'll select my next scene, adjust the hold time. I'll adjust this to 10 seconds, then press enter. I'll select the next scene, adjust the hold time, which I've set at six seconds, then press enter. I'm gonna select one last scene, which is scene one. And this is very important. When you're at your last scene, you do not press enter. Pressing enter will add an empty show step. The next thing we want to do is deselect the scene button, then use the right cursor button so we can set our loop status. Right now it's set to on. This is the default setting. With the loop status on, the show will loop continuously over and over again. If we set this setting to off, the show will play once through and stop. As I want mine to loop continuously, I'll set this to on. I'll then press the right cursor key one time to get to our show name. This allows me to name the show. You can use the plus minus keys to change characters or the data wheel. Press the right cursor key to move the cursor to the right and the left cursor key to move the cursor to the left. I'll name my scene using my external keyboard as I've connected to the rear of the Show Designer 2. I'll name this Club Show 1. Our next setting is our manual setting. With this setting in the off position, it means that the Show Designer will play this show automatically with the originally programmed times. If we wish to manually trigger each show step using the Go button, we'll set this setting to on. As I want my show to play back automatically, I'll leave this setting to off. To store the show, select the page where you wish to store your show. I'll save this show as number one on page one. The show will then have been stored. To exit, press the record button one time. To play back a show that you've recorded into the Show Designer 2, press the show button so its LED illuminates, then scroll to the page that contains the show by using the up down arrow buttons. Then select the number switch that contains the show that you wish to play back. The show will begin to play immediately. The display will give you the information for the show. It tells us that we're running our club show one and it tells us that we're on step three currently, which is now changed to step four. And our internal clock is counting down the whole time for each step. You can pause the show at any time by pressing the left cursor key. Our automatic timer stops and the step that was running will remain on. 
We can then use the go button to manually trigger show steps. To start the automatic timer once again, press the right arrow key. As you can see, our hold times are once again counting down. Pressing the same show button will call a blackout. If you're going to use a MIDI sequencer or MIDI controller to trigger the show designer scenes, you have to assign the MIDI channel by pressing the menu button and selecting the set MIDI channel option. Press enter, then use data wheel 1 to adjust your desired MIDI channel. This ranges from 1 to 16. Press enter to confirm the setting. To exit, press the menu button twice. Refer to your manual for additional MIDI instructions. Once you've programmed your console, you can save all the information to the CF port. To do so, insert a CF card at this point, then go into the menu options, use data wheel 1 to scroll to the save memory file to disk option. Then press enter. You can name the file by using the plus and minus switches to change the characters or using data wheel 2. To move the cursor left and right, use the right and left cursor buttons. If you have a keyboard connected, you can use the keyboard to name your file. There's a default name that comes up as SD2 MEM01. You can use this name or enter a new one. I'll call mine test01. Once you name the file, press the enter button and the show designer will begin to save the information immediately. Once the information has been stored, a message will appear that reads file has been saved to disk. All memory will then have been saved. To load a memory file from the compact flash port, go into the menu, use data wheel 1 to select the load memory file from disk option, then press enter. The files on the disk will come up on the second line of the display. Use data wheel 1 to scroll through the various memory files. As I named mine test01, and this being the one I want to load, I'll press enter. A message will appear that reads, this will replace the entire memory, press yes to continue or no to exit. I'll press yes to continue. The memory file will begin to load immediately. Once your main Show Designer 2 screen comes up, the memory file will have been loaded. To update Show Designer 2 software, insert the compact flashcard that contains the software update. Once entered, press the menu button, then use data wheel 1 to scroll to the update software option. Press enter. The unit will start receiving the new program immediately. It will take several minutes to complete the update. Software updates can be downloaded from the factory website at www.elationlighting.com. It's important to note that Show Designer 2 software can only be updated through the compact flash port when a drive is installed. If there is no drive installed, then you use the RS-232 port. After the software is successfully updated, the Show Designer 2 will reboot with the new version installed. 
Once the update is finished, your LCD will read Show Designer 2 with the new revision.